Welcome to episode 6 of Don't Get Fooled Again. The name of our production company is the Glen Burnie Players. I'm your host, Anthony Bynum. We have a lot to get through, so let's take a look at the rundown. We start off with an interview with local but excellent musician, Mr. Wesley Watkins Jr. We followed that with a look at a special organization right here in Glen Burnie. They're called Hope for All. After a short animated spot, we take a look at another segment. It's called Anywhere in Anne Arundel. This is followed by Military Appreciation Day. This was sponsored by the John Wesley United Methodist Church of Glen Burnie. We are treated with a performance by Chow Tien. She plays a dulcimer. This is an instrument that goes back to biblical times. She's also a virtuoso. Next, we cover the first annual Chili Cook-Off. This was sponsored by the Northern Anne Arundel County Police. Then we finish up with another performance. This one done by the Crofton Middle School. They celebrated Black History Month by taking a look at some great jazz musicians. So everybody, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Good morning. I'm, I have the opportunity to have a great interview uh, this morning. We're talking with uh, Wes Watkins Jr. or Wesley Watkins Jr. Uh, Wes, um, thank you so much for taking a little bit out of your time. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you, Tony. Anthony, good morning, my brother. <laughs> How's, your week? How's your week going? It's, it's going great. It's, it's, it's been great. Um, the sad part, within another hour, I'm going to a funeral, but it's been great. Being here on your show, brother, this is a prayer come true for me. Yes. So I'm on cloud 99, not just on cloud 99. <laughs> but it's an honor. Clouds are always a place to be, I think. I think they're always a place to be. Yeah. So this morning, uh, Wes, we were talking a little bit about you know, your past, and uh, you were telling me a little bit about being from Florida. Uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, a little bit about, about your history. Originally from Panama City, Florida, the great Panama City, Florida, northern of Florida. I grew up there until I was in fifth grade, then we moved further down south, Palmetto, which is close to Sarasota, north of Sarasota, south of Tampa. I grew up there uh, from fifth grade to 12th, played football, baseball. But in Panama City, I played snare drum in the drum and bugle corps in fifth grade. And my family is nine of us. Mother had nine beautiful kids. And I'm four, the fourth of nine. So uh, wow. when we went further down south, my mother was telling us that we was going to Palmetto. I used to love fruit, all that. I didn't know how to pick them. Went down there picking oranges, strawberries, and potatoes came with the Virginia and grapefruits. We fed the nation, my brother. <laughs> so I picked fruits from fifth grade until my 12th grade year in high school. Wow. We had to, as a living, I was migrant workers. We worked in the field, sun up to sundown, but it has made me a better man. I, I thank God so much for that. There, uh, there's, a, there's a certain dignity in honest work. I think uh, I think we all understand that. And however we end up, wherever we go in our lives, that's part of us. That's that makes part of our work ethic. I, I truly I truly yeah. believe that's true. I, I agree 100. 100. Yes. Well, 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 I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, you didn't. You didn't. It's good. It's good. In high school, I played football and baseball. I had offers to go to college, believe it or not, play football, defense, play quarterback, safety, uh, baseball and all of that. And um, that's what I thought I was going to be, be. You know, I wanted to go to college and become a pro, pro to lead and build my mother home. But God has something totally different. And I uh, got gave my life to Christ two weeks after I graduated from high school in 1972, and I started playing drums going on my 19th year. So it's been 50 years now, and it's been a roller coaster, but, but it's been a great ride. 
<laughs> you know. <laughs> Tony, if you told me 50 years later, I'm on your show. This is beautiful, my friend. Oh boy, what an oh, honor. This is powerful. What an honor for me. Yes. To to engage in a, a conversation with someone who uh has this uh, uh, this this unique history because we all have unique histories and we embrace those histories. Yes, yes. You had to tell me about the family business. You had to tell me about the family business. <laughs> the family business that you're speaking of is the music. Is music, but before music, there was a janitorial cleaning business. Now I ended up here because my wife of 37 years. She was in the army. She was stationed at the Pentagon. So when I came up here, not knowing anybody, I only had one son. Her son, Jermaine, who I raised, who is my son. He turned 50 uh, two or three weeks ago. He's, well, you know, March 5th. He'll kill me. But well, anyway, his birthday is March 5th. So I, I raised him. We have a great relationship. That's how I ended up here. And I was playing drums way before then. So my son, Wesley, who is the other drummer, Wes Watkins, and quite a few people know who Wes is. Uh, when my wife, Brenda, was carrying Wes, I used to listen to jazz, the great jazz drummer, Max Roach, Tony Williams. And I was singing these rhythms to Wesley in his mother's womb. One day you go to good drummer. So he was born in February the 12th, 1987. Brought him home from the hospital. I took him a stairs tone and put drumsticks in his hands. Oh boy. His history, he's unbelievable. So everybody, quite a few people know who Wes is and know who I am. And uh, so it's, it's been, like you say, it's just for you to say the business. It, it, it is that for us. It is that I never thought that uh, I'd be doing it on this level. And to be at John Wesley, I met John Wesley, that's why I met you and doing this interview. It don't get no better than this, my brother. Oh boy. I'm almost you know, Another day, right? As another day is another opportunity. Yes. And that's what yes. I'm sensing right here. Every day is an opportunity for Wes, Wesley Watkins Jr. to go out and do his thing. And that's, that's yes. marvelous. Yes. That's marvelous. I've done getting out. My son Wesley, Wesley does sometimes seven, eight, nine, ten gigs on the weekend. <laughs> First, I've probably done gigs with my band probably four or five this year. And I mean, he's constantly doing them. But here I am now playing at John Wesley every Sunday morning. Oh, it is so delightful. Choir rehearsals. You know, I'm learning how to read music and all that. I'm in hog heaven, brother. Oh, boy. It, it's, it's, it's like I wake up, I practice three or four hours a day. I eat, sleep, drink what this gift that God has put in me. Tell my friend, I just can't put this aside. I mean, it's, it's, it's in your DNA. I yes. was cool to play music, to play drums. And at times I made it difficult. It's, it's a very difficult to some people, an instrument to play, you got four limbs doing four different things. And it's taken me a while to understand how to coordinate it. But man, I'm having fun. It's like that. Last, uh, last weekend, I uh, shot just a little bit of video while we were uh, streaming the service. And you were having so much fun out there. You were having so much fun. Everything I see when I look at you is a big smile on your face. That's just a testament. In my opinion, that's just a testament. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, it's therapeutic. It's, it's my life. It, it, it is something. And I, again, the struggles that I've had and people telling me as a minister, you, you shouldn't be playing drums. And you should, I, I went through all of that. At 69 years old, I know my calling. Yes. I've been play. This beautiful instrument is called a drum. The most powerful instrument, the loudest instrument on the face of the earth, drums. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bro, it can drown out anything and everybody. 
express myself, what I'm hearing in my head and, and all of that and just enjoying life. I can go downstairs in my, in my, I have to show you my drum room. I have to show you my drum room, right? my prayer room. I go down there, bro, and I'm in, in communion with God, asking him to give me what I need to open up my ear that I can hear and be able to express myself. And every drum, every stick has something different. There's something different about it, feelings of it and all that. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's like that. Wes, it's a, it's a beautiful story. I'm honored that you decided to share it with me. I'm going to want a picture of that room, by the way. I'm going to want a picture of that room. We'll work oh, yeah. on that in, in post-production. <laughs> but, I, um, well, we, I, we, I'm sorry, I'm going to cut you off. I would love, maybe one day you come over. And, and it's, it's, it's a small room, but it is so powerful. It, it is so powerful for me to go down there to be creative, to express myself. Uh, to, to God and because Tony, I, I've had people tell me you, you can't play, you this and you that. I've gone home and cried sometimes. Grown men cry because I didn't fit. And sometimes I was telling people sometimes you try to make a puzzle. You know, when you have a puzzle, you try to make the pieces fit. It looks like it fit. You can try to force it, but it's not going to fit. Right. You know, fit in every, uh, everybody's not going to want you. And I, I had to understand that. Okay, and every, let me say this, and I might start crying. When I come to John Wesley to see your smile, to see others, at this time of my age, it is so beautiful. It is so powerful. And I'm going to say this again. I'm on your talk show, brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This, yeah. it, this is God, and wow. My, my son being interviewed, I, I've been interviewed before, but my son, he get these interviews. Dad is being interviewed a little West. This is not little West, this is the big Wesley. <laughs> this is the real Wesley. This is the real West Watkins. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like that, brother. Well, Wes, we're, we're gonna end up closing on, um, on, on part of what, you're talking about right now because we shot a little video last week. Um, so, with that said, uh, do you have any closing uh, thoughts before we uh, before we end up here? I, I would like to say again, I cannot thank God enough. Thank you enough. And to those of you, regardless of your age, don't stop dreaming. Go after it. Be patient with yourself. It can happen. I'm, I'm a living witness. Dreams come true. How do I know that? I'm on Tony. <laughs> <laughs> right? So keep dreaming. Don't stop. Don't look at your age. Don't say it won't ever happen. God bless Moses at 80. God is blessing Wesley Panama Watkins Jr. I'd be 70. Thank you, T. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut down, but I need you to stay with me, okay? Okay. We're speaking with Connie Cooper, Executive Director of Hope for All. Connie, thank you for allowing me into your facility. I know you're very, very busy. I'm glad we could have you, Anthony. So, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the organization? Well, Hope for All started over 19 years ago by a gentleman named Leo Sir Husen, and he had been on a mission trip and felt 
the need to do more for those people, and he was actually in Appalachia, and they had said he, that they needed clothing. So he and his friends and his uh, church friends started gathering clothing. He was also a teacher, and so was his wife. And they, at the same time, realized that the kids in their school could use those clothes as well. So they started saving clothes, and eventually it went from clothing to linens, to housewares, and then eventually to furniture. And in the first year after becoming a 501c3, they did 13 families where they came around them and gave them everything that they needed to make their house into a home. Uh, last year, we did 363 families and we did the same exact thing, just helping them uh, come around them so that they could become self-sufficient, could go to school, could get a job. Um, that's what we want them to do. And so we um, provide through community donations and to recycle them right back out to the community to help them. Fantastic. That's very, very admirable. Very admirable. So can you tell me a little bit about your your future plans? Well, our, our future plans are to do what we're doing, to stay in our lane, but to be able to do it more efficiently. We are experiencing a, a great growth in the amount of people that are needing our services coming out of the pandemic. The, just the numbers have gone off the charts. So we are trying to be there so that we can serve everyone in a, in a more timely manner in the future so that they're not waiting, that they're not sleeping on the floor for any extended period of time. So that's our goal. Our goal is to be able to do what we do better, more efficiently, but it, it requires that the community buys into what we're doing and, and the donations come in, um, physical as well as uh, financial, so that we can serve our community the best at, at, that we possibly can. Again, it's it's very admirable. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Connie, for taking a little bit out of your time to well, you're welcome speak with us. My pleasure. Welcome back to Don't Get Fooled Again. In our show, we spotlight all that is positive in our county. We know you have a lot of choices, so we thank you for spending time with us. Our goal is to tell your story, the story of us here in this special place we call home. Again, thank you. George Gaither Amen. was George Gaither Amen. Uh, and for whatever reason he isn't here today but um, I'm going to do the best I can Mr. Gaither was something like Mr. Wayne Hines a walking encyclopedia yes. about the church history he grew up he was born here grew up here and he's still here yeah. for me I'll tell you about the history of John Wesley as I remember it as I heard about it, and as I read about it. My history of John Wesley started in August of 1962. The pastor at the time was Reverend Scott. He and his wife were the first residents of the newly built parsonage next door. My husband had come here as a youth. I can remember writing to my mom and my grandmother, telling them, that there were a lot of white people attending the <laughs> church. <laughs> My grandmother laughed and said, I doubt that. I later learned, of course, that Miss Pauline and Miss Maisie were indeed not white, <laughs> nor some of the others that were here. John Wesley began back in 1850 under the name of Furnish Branch Methodist Church. At that time, it was attended by slaves and free persons. 
meeting at night in one of the local churches, always with a few whites attending. This was before the Civil War and before the end of slavery. The people grew tired of this arrangements and eventually purchased this plot of land, which was very swampy, but it is the land that we now stand on. They got Mr. Nora Queen to build a church and it served the City Hill and Furnish Branch communities. The first trustees were black and white. Later, the Washington Annual Conference was formed in 1864 on November the 1st, the day Maryland was declared a free state. As some of you may remember, when Lincoln gave his Emancipation Proclamation address, it was to free the slaves in all of the states that was in rebellion against the Union. Maryland was never in rebellion. Therefore, the slaves in Maryland were not freed until November 1st of that year. And that came about because the legislation voted to make the slaves free, but the voting was not unanimous. On that day, the church was then incorporated and the church's new name was John Wesley Methodist Church with the first minister with credentials and his name was N.M. Carroll. And you know there is an N.M. Carroll home in Baltimore City. This information is written in each of our anniversary journals through the years. Over on the table there, I have a sample of all the journals that the church has developed since 1966, supposedly every five years. A lot of our history is not recorded in any other source other than here, but it has been handed down by mouth as seniors have told their stories, such as the kids from the former elementary school that stood out here on the property attended the burial of prisoners from the local prison because there were no families to attend their funerals. Others remember Mrs. Knight. Some of you may have heard people joke about Mrs. Knight. She was the choir director, and she would walk here from Brooklyn to practice with our choir, and, and uh, sometimes the choir didn't show up. Miss Knight was still here. Miss Pauline Hahn stated that she walked down Crane Highway with her children when it was a road covered with oyster shells. Many years later, the state had plans to build Ritchie Highway from Baltimore to Annapolis. Its path went past the back of the church. On January 9th of this year, the Glen Burnie branch of the Anne Arundel County Public Library System hosted talented virtuoso Chow Tien. Chow Tien plays the exotic instrument known as the dulcimer. This many-stringed percussion instrument goes back to biblical times. Chow Tien was gracious enough to allow us to use one of her pieces. The piece, Flower in Youth, was inspired by a Chinese folk song called Yu Ru.
On February 11th, a breezy, cool, but sunny day, the Northern District of Anne Arundel County Police sponsored its first annual Chili Cook-Off. The event was part of their ongoing community outreach program. Individual teams were encouraged to prepare and bring chili to the event, which was held at the Brooklyn Park Middle School. The best chili would be voted on and, of course, eaten. The Northern District spent a lot of time promoting the event through both local community groups and other sources. Of the tables I observed, one caught my attention. The 100 Club of Anne Arundel County is a support group for first responders. Its mission statement is to provide assistance to active, uniformed public safety officers of affiliated agencies via scholarships and or compassionate giving to those who are severely injured or make the ultimate sacrifice while in service to the citizens of Anne Arundel County. Welcome to our performance. We are the Crofton Middle School Jazz Band. Tonight's concert will feature music by some of the most important jazz music, music, musicians in history. Jazz is a uniquely art, American art form, the bringing together of musical traditions from Africa and Western Europe. Created a uh, rhythmic, rhythmically vibrant and improvisational form of music, musical expression. We will. <laughs> plenty of options, but you chose us. Our goal is to tell the story of Anne Arundel County one person at a time, one segment at a time, one laugh at a time. If you'd like to participate in the show, there are different ways of doing that. Drop us an email at aabynum at yahoo.com. That's aabynum at yahoo.com. If you are watching on YouTube, feel free to subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to make comments. Now, 
special treat. We've saved our best for the last. So watch the credits until the very end, and you're in for a treat. Other than that, this has been Anthony Bynum. Bye-bye. Okay, Mom. Celebrating Thank your birthday. Thank you, everybody. Anybody else? Anybody in particular or anything else you want to say, Mom? Anything else you want to say? No. Okay, we're getting ready to go out, so I guess we're, we're going to turn it <laughs> off for now. <laughs>